Hello, this is Dead Hamster, and today we're going to be doing the next chapter in the Making a Mod series. Uh, this is going to be covering the object animations. So we have uh, animated objects uh, where the individual pieces of the animation, the arms and legs, can move independently of each other. Uh, this is a custom piece of code that I've written for the uh, the Mario Kart game. It's running inside the uh, the game itself. Uh, it takes a set of uh, uh, exported data from the uh, the FBX file and uh, reads the uh, the animation from that, and then uh, imports that into a format that I can read out later. Uh, it is a rather complex system. A lot of independent parts go into it. Uh, there's the, the actual animation in the 3D model, uh, the, the reading of that and the converting it into the data, and then actually reading that data in game and uh, manipulating the model pieces to, uh, to display everything. Uh, so we're gonna go over all of that piece by piece and uh, showcase how that all works and how that all goes together. Okay, and here we have our model, in this case Koopa the Quick, uh, from Super Mario 64. Now, brief breakdown on how 3D models work. Uh, you're going to have a series of points in 3D space with X, Y, and Z coordinates. Uh, these points, these dots here, are called verts. Those verts are connected with these white lines, which are called edges. Uh, those will form triangles, which will be the faces. <clears throat> now, when you want to move a uh, an object around for example if I wanted to move this arm or have the hand move up and down you could take the position of all the verts and move and rotate them uh, however doing so is pretty complicated it involves taking a lot of positions the position of every single vert and uh, moving all of them and tracking the movement of uh, of each individual vertex uh, this could be a lot of data to store and to, to process for each frame and so for most video games what you're going to see instead is a system called uh, skeleton animations or uh, you're going to see a bone system uh, in Super Mario 64 in Mario Kart we're going to see a similar system for the, uh, the, the one I've written here in this case you're going to assign entire meshes to a bone and then rotate and move the bones as opposed to moving the entire mesh itself so you're going to see the entire arm move when the bone moves or rotates additionally bones can be what are called child bones to parent bones in this case i have a bone for the body the actual physical you know body of the koopa itself that's uh, the parent bone to all the limbs the arms and the legs so while i can move an individual limb if i move the body all the limbs move with it uh, this creates a, uh, a, a structure a system where the skeleton remains intact uh, you don't have to track individual pieces and, and do any kind of complicated math because the skeleton is going to remain again uh, a, a parent and child system where none of the bones will become disjointed this allows you to make very simple and quick animations like this walk here where the koopa bobs up and down with the body bones and the legs and feet will move independently to uh, give the illusion that the uh, the koopa is actually walking as opposed to just sliding across the ground back and forth now what we are uh, actually doing here we have 60 frames of animation in this case and on each frame we're slightly changing the position and the rotation of all the different bones now, when we store this in the game, we're going to need to store 60 frames of rotation and position data for each bone, as opposed to 60 frames of position and rotation data for each vertex. Now, when you're looking at 222 vertexes as opposed to five bones, you can see again how the, the data uh, correlation comes in here. You're going to have to store a significant amount less data and uh, still be able to, to display somewhat realistic animations for the other uh, system we're targeting. This is still what's done in modern games as opposed to five bones. You're going to have dozens or you know over a hundred bones for each of the, the individual joints and things like that. Uh, but again, it's just such a, a, a smarter way of, of animating and it's more realistic to uh, an actual physical structure as well where a person has bones with uh, a mesh attached to them. Now with this data, we're going to be exporting this out into the FBX format and our tool editor will be taking the next step, which is taking all this data from the FBX file and converting it and porting it into a, a format where we can read it later with our custom code. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at that part now. 
Okay, so looking into this next part here, this is the uh, the C sharp code for Tarmac, our editing tool. <clears throat> With this program, we're going to be loading the FBX file and uh, parsing the animation data out of that, all the translations and the, uh, the rotation data. And then we're going to be converting that into a format that we can read later with our game code. So it's a three-step process. First, we have to export the, the model data that we create. Then we have to convert it. And then we have to run that new data. Um, that's always the, you know, the three processes, so to speak, for, uh, for getting custom content. And, so when we load our skeleton out, we're going to parse the FBX file and, uh, and load that into the, uh, the, the internal structure that we use. And then we're going to start parsing the animation. So for each uh, bone, we're going to start with the parent bone, uh, which is the, the root, and then we're going to move to its children. Uh, each bone will have the animation loaded, and then we'll go through each of its children, assign the child to that parent bone, so that again, we maintain that structure and then parse the animation so go back and go through for that and now for each of those children bones we'll loop back in and again each of these parses is to the same function so we're looping through the children and then going back to the parent and then looping through the next children and going back to the parent and uh, through that way we build that uh, skeleton structure where each of the children bones uh, remains inherited to the parent now when we actually load the animation data out um, we're going to take, oh, did I hit the wrong button here? I think it's starting. Yeah. Uh, so we're going to take each frame. So we have in this case, again, it was a 60 frame animation. We're going to take the translation and we're going to store that uh, into a 16-bit uh, value multiplied by 100. Uh, we used a fixed point system as opposed to uh, uh, floating point values. 16-bit uh, so values is half the size when we're dealing with 60 frames and 5 bones. Uh, being able to take up less animation space is uh, definitely beneficial. So in this case, we're giving up a small amount of precision in exchange for uh, saving data space. We're not going to have any kind of uh, large value values where we're shifting uh, uh, the movement by like 200 or 2000 units so multiplying by 100 allows us to to store decimal values uh, in a 16-bit value and we will then divide by 100 later and convert back to a float um, and, and again in doing this we're converting it to a fixed point system temporarily to uh, save space we're going to do that with all of the uh, translation data and then the rotation data as well now here, there's a little bit of a conversion we do, uh, where we divide the uh, the radians and then multiply by B6 in hexadecimal. Uh, the way that the rotations are stored in Mario Kart 64 is as a 16-bit integer. Uh, B6 would be the value equal to about one degree. So we're trying to get the value in degrees for the rotation stored so that we can again use that later. And that's why we're gonna multiply by B6 here to, uh, to store the number of degrees, not the number of, uh, of raw units. It'd be difficult to convert otherwise. Once we have all this data, uh, we also take the scaling data. Our animations are also able to scale individually per frame, which normally the uh, Super Mario 64 and Mario Kart animations cannot. Uh, that was a new neat feature that I wanted to make sure I included. Uh, so we also take the, uh, the scaling data for each frame. After taking the, uh, the, the translation and the rotation data, we have to interpret the, uh, that frame's rotation from the parent. So for example, if on a frame the parent bone has rotated, that changes the position of all the child bones. To make the calculations as quick and easy as possible on the Nintendo 64, I pre-calculate all those rotations and translations based on the parent bones and pre-bake or pre-calculate those into the individual frame rotation and translations. Uh, it's easier to pre-calculate these since they're going to be absolute uh, and they're not going to change again based on the, the animation that's playing out and this saves us a lot of time later not having to do that on the N64. 
We'll still have to do at least a little bit of interpretation because the objects themselves will move around, uh, but this will save us at least a lot of hassle pre-calculating it on our computer as opposed to running it on the PC itself. And that's what this transform bone does. It takes the, uh, the point of the parent and it rotates the, uh, the child bone based on the transformations of the parent bone. Uh, once all of those translations have been re uh, read out of the FBX file and stored in the bones, uh, you can assign those to an object. And when we build the, uh, the object out, we just write out those values. The 16-bit uh, translations, the rotations, and the scales all get written into a table. And the position of those data tables is then stored inside the object. Now when our game code runs in a little bit, we'll be able to load the objects up, uh, see where the positions of those tables are, and then apply those tables to the current object's rotations. We're going to take a look at that right now. Okay, so now looking at the actual game code that's running on the Nintendo 64 itself, we have our... Uh, oh. We have our object drawing code, and when we go to draw each individual object, we scroll through every type and then look for every instance of that type. This allows us to uh, load less textures by drawing each instance uh, individually, as opposed to drawing them uh, one after the other, and texture loading is a big uh, hassle on the N64, uh, causes a lot of latency, so we want to avoid unnecessary texture loads. If the object does not have an animation, uh, so if the animation address is null, then we just draw it normally uh, as a static object. However, if there is an animation, so that's this else statement here, uh, that's when we load the animation data from where it's stored in the, uh, the course data, and we run this function, the, uh, the animation loop. So we're going to parse through um, each object, each, uh, each bone rather, in the skeleton. So again, we start with the body bone and then move down to each of its children in the structure. And we're going to run the loop back for each of its children. The same way that we did the transforms earlier to read the data out and store them in the tree, we're now going to loop through that data uh, the exact same way. Uh, we're going to read the offsets. Again, we stored the offsets to the translation, rotation, and scaling data. So we're going to load this up, and then skeletal matrix is what actually applies that transformation to the bone. So with each object, we take each instance of that object. So if I have five Koopas running around the level, I go to each of those Koopas, and I draw each bone individually. So I start with, say, the, the body bone, and I draw each Koopa's body by going to take the angle data and the translation data and the scaling data and we apply that to the object. So first we move the skeleton to where it needs to be for the object. We shift it based on the animation. We rotate that based on the object's rotation. Again, there was a small bit that we had to, a lot of it was pre-baked, but now we have to do a small bit again in game code. After the object has been positioned properly, we then take the angle and rotate the object so that it's facing the proper way, again, based on that animation frame. At this point, we can scale it, again, based on the current scaling frame of that animation, and then set that, uh, that, that matrix manipulation so that the object is positioned properly in 3D space. When that gets done properly, we can display the object and then go to the next one in the loop. Then we load the next bone, come back here again, we load the angle, translation, and scaling data, and then apply them again. Go to the next bone, loop through, etc., etc. Uh, after going through all of those, um, all of them have been drawn, we go back to the next object type. If it's one, again, that has animations, we animate it, if not static, until we run out of types. To uh, showcase what that looks like now, we're going to go ahead and uh, take a peek in game. We've seen what the Koopa looks like running around here. But now we want to show it off actually running on the, uh, the N64. Okay, and here we are. So here's the Koopa running in-game. So I could... Oh, I can drive around. Oh, drive all past him and see him from different angles. Uh, he is running through the animation frames, as you can see. Walking, bobbing up and down. Uh, as he rotates, you can see all the bones stay in place like they're supposed to. And he continues to go through that animation um, 
and then loops back to the start, plays through it again. So each bone draws out, reads the translations, the rotations. There's no scaling in this animation, um, but if there was, it would scale out as well, and then uh, manipulates that bone in 3D space and places it there. That is the, uh, the animation system. Again, pretty complex, quite a bit to it, um, but it allows me to uh, add a little bit of life to these objects, make them a little bit more realistic and interesting, and uh, hopefully add a bit more character to these levels. So again, I want to uh, thank everybody for their interest. Appreciate, as always, um, you know, your guys' support and the interest in the project. Um, will be more of these videos and more content coming out soon uh, more updates to the levels as well I do have the uh, the next update around the corner hopefully now that I have most of these things worked out uh, excited to uh, to show off some more things coming up as well a lot of new features that have been uh, kept a bit under the hood so definitely stay tuned and up to date uh, if you want to be kept up to uh, to progress with everything going on with Mario Kart 64 modding definitely check out the Overcart 64 discord server and uh, subscribe to the channel here again I want to thank everybody so much for your continued interest in the project uh, it's great knowing that there are other people out there who appreciate this as well otherwise we're just uh, working on this for ourselves, and that's not nearly as much fun so thank you all so very much uh, greatly appreciate all that and as always until next time you guys take care